Good morning and welcome to my show. I'm your host, Danny Graham, and I both invite and encourage you to walk with me on the road to wisdom. Come on, y'all. Let's walk. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another edition, the 210th episode of my show, The Road to Wisdom. And I'm your host, Danny Graham. Thank you for joining me. Today's topic, as you see right here below me, is God is still in the business of doing the impossible. Let me say that one more time. God, our Lord and Savior, is still in the business of doing the impossible. Let me tell you, give you a definition of the word impossible, like I always like to do, so we make sure we're all on the same page, so we know what particular meaning, because some of these words that I give you have dual meanings. So I want to make sure the meaning that I want to discuss is what you have in your mind, in your head, so I like to always give a definition of the word, what I'm talking about. And the word impossible is, simply put, not able to occur, exist, or to be done. Let me say that one more time. Impossible. Not able to occur, not able to exist, or not able to be done. That is the definition of impossible. And as we know, God is omnipotent. He is all powerful. I can't say I can't say that enough. And we know there is nothing that He can't create. There's nothing that that doesn't exist without Him, and there's nothing that He can't do. So impossible is His specialty, and God is still in the business of doing the impossible. I want to read you a scripture, and this this is just. Basic information. I like to get. I love numbers and stuff. But impossible. The word impossible appears nine times in the New King James Bible. If you read, if you have that version of the Bible, there are several different versions out there. But in the King James, the New King James version, the word impossible, impossible appears nine times. I want to read to you a couple of scriptures. The first scripture comes from the Book of Luke, the first chapter, the thirty seventh verse, and it reads as follows: For with God, nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Second chapter, I mean, the second scripture comes from the book of Luke, same book, the 18th chapter in the 27th verse, and it reads as follows. And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Again, Luke, the 18th chapter, 27th verse reads, and he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Jesus was saying that to one of the disciples in the Bible, if I remember correctly. And, and that just goes to say, I can't reiterate that enough. Men can do a lot of incredible things, a lot of amazing things. But there are some things that are beyond the capability of man. And we have to let our mind wrap around that because there, there are scientists out there. There, there are processes out there. There are things that, that science and the culture is trying to do. They're trying to, I think, sometimes in certain areas, overreach their capabilities. But there's nothing. And I can't say it enough. Nothing that is impossible for God. Like I said, modern medicine, modern technology has come a long way. There was a time I can remember when it was a eight track player. I remember it quite fondly in my uncle's car. He had an eight track player on his seat. The eight track player then went to the cassette player. I remember the cassettes. I had several cassettes. The cassette player then transferred and went to the DVD player. It has several DVD play DVDs. The DVD player is now for Bluetooth. Because my last vehicle I, I got, my last two vehicles, I'm looking for the CD player. There ain't none. I'm sorry, Mr. Graham. These trucks don't come with CD player. Well, what do you do? Bluetooth. So you hook your phone up to it. You get your Bluetooth wireless. You create your playlist on your phone or whatever, your iPod or whatever um, means of however you play music, and you uh, create you a playlist on there, or you go on YouTube and punch in a song, it hooks up wireless, the wireless connection hooks up to your, your vehicle, and voila, it plays through the radio. So there's there's not even any kind of 8-track now. 8-track went to cassettes, then cassettes went to DV, DVD, DVs, CDs, correction, CDs, and now CDs are now Going and now it's Bluetooth. I don't, Bluetooth. 
I don't even know if they even sell CDs in the store anymore. I can't remember the last time I went to the store. Now I see vinyl records are making a comeback. And I see the vinyl record players in Walmart and some of these these old stores and stuff. They're making a comeback, but I don't think CDs are making a comeback. Um, I can't remember the last time I went to the store and looked for CDs. And they still may be in there, but I just go on YouTube or I go Spotify or something and download what I want and keep it moving. Create a playlist, you know. Uh-huh. Hook up my Bluetooth in my truck, or oh, I got my wireless headphones, and they connect to my phone, and I play what I want to hear. So that's just how um, something that seemed impossible a few years back is now possible. That's just some of the examples of how man has come a long way, but they still will never, ever, ever, ever surpass God. Whatever technology, whatever uh, medical advances they make. It's not ever going to compare to what God can do in a snap. Now, I want to tell you two stories that's talking about impossible. Well, not, well it's, beyond my cap- it's beyond man's capability. But when I pray to God on one of these stories, God is working. He is currently working now, and I can see it, and it's, it's just very pleasing to me. Here's another story where a prayer was answered, where well, like man, man couldn't get it together, but... <clears throat> This person prayed and God answered her prayers and it worked. And, and, and the way he worked things out, sometimes when you sit back and look at it, you be like, man, that's 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 just incredible. That's amazing how that worked out that way. This first story is about a family. I'm not going to call their names, but it involved a mother, a daughter, and a father. And that dynamic, it was a husband and wife and their daughter. The mother... This is a true story. I got this from a friend of mine that told me from the mother. The mother told a story to a friend of mine, and she told me the story. And I was, I seen some parts of the story as she told me the whole story. And as I look back, I could see the whole story. I could see the parts of it. While it was happening, didn't know what was going on. But as when she told me the story, I could go back and see, I could go back and recall these events and see just how God was working. Anyway, the mother. Mother, the wife in this story had a terminal illness, was dying. Knew she had maybe six months to a year, a year and a half, whatever. Knew that they'd done everything they could do medically. She was dying. She had to wear oxygen, uh, had to quit work, but she was dying. Um, her daughter lived in another part of the state, and her husband was in law enforcement, and she wanted to spend as much time as she could with her husband and her daughter together. So she prayed to God and said, Lord, please, I don't have much time left. Please let it be so I can spend quality time with my family. I'm not sure what the time frame was from that prayer to what, what the first step of God's process, but her daughter got into a wreck, an automobile accident, was not killed, but was temporarily paralyzed or, or had some issues with walking and that kind of stuff. And she couldn't live in the town and take care of herself. So she had to move to where her mother and father were living at. And they had to help nurse her back to health. So that's one part. The, the, the damage, like I said, she sustained an accident. The daughter sustained in the accident was not permanent. It was something temporarily, but she couldn't take care of herself by herself. So she moved in to the house with the parents. That was one of the, pre- uh, one of the prayers answered. That the mother made. So while the daughter was at the hospital, the father went to visit the daughter at the hospital and he slipped and fell on the hospital step. Broke his leg, injured his leg some kind of way. So then he was out of work while he was recuperating and he had to stay at home. I think six weeks, six, eight weeks, six to 12 weeks, somewhere in that time frame. But her daughter and her husband had injuries, not permanent injuries, but injuries that put them where they had to be in the house with each other. And she spent a good portion of the last days of her life with them, with her family, with her husband, with her wife. Didn't know anything about that story until my friend told me. And when I look back at it, I was like, man, that did happen. And that did happen. And now the, the, the wife, she passed. The daughter was healed and was able to go back on her own, take care of herself. But the husband, he passed shortly after the wife. 
but she prayed to to God and asked, Lord, if it's your will, these, these last few uh, time I have left in my life, I want to spend that quality time with two people that's most important to me, which was her daughter and her husband. And God granted her that. Uh, like I can say the daughter was involved in an accident and was hurt and had to be taken, had, had to receive um, care from her mother and, and nurses that they brought in. But she stayed at the house with her mother and her father. And then when the father was visiting her before she came to live with them, he got injured going to visit her. And then he was sidelined at the house for a few weeks. So God answered that mother's, that wise prayer. And she was able to spend quality time, several weeks that she normally wouldn't have spent with her, with her loved ones. That's where God is still doing things that are in, that, that seem impossible to, impossible to us, but he can make them possible. And he did that. So that, like I said, whenever I was, I heard the story, I was like, hmm, that did happen. Just the same way that the story was told to me. Second story involves me. Um, it's going, I'm going through it right now, and I'm just happy as can be. Um, as y'all know, I've been doing this show for a while. Um, this is my 210th episode. And every time I've, I've sent it out to my family members, I send it out to my kids, um, different friends at, at work, different people that I know that, they said they want to support me, and I sent it out to them every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Well, about two weeks ago, my son called me. He said, Dad, I watched one of your shows, and I think it's time for a change. I want to go a different direction, a spiritual direction. So I'm on the phone. I'm like, what? And I'm happy. I don't know what to say. He said, can I come and go to church with you? I was like, thank you, Lord. I said to myself, thank you, Lord. I, I know this is you. I said, yes, son, you can definitely come anytime you want to. Um, I told him about my church, um, and I love my, my church pastor. Uh, pastor Al Sims, Al Sims is the, is the uh, pastor there. But there's a church of God located in something in the town where I live. And I took my son there last week, and he said he enjoyed it afterwards. And then Saturday, yesterday, I got a text well, early evening. Dad, I want to come at church with you. Uh, what time do I need to be there? I'm like, yes, yes. I said, come here at 9.30, son. But last Sunday when I was leaving, one of the, uh, the the associate pastors there, he was telling me that they were discussing one of, one of my favorite topics, which you know I already, I've already discussed on here, the Nephilim. He said, this is like our third or fourth week. And we'll be discussing, and then we're going to wrap up the, the discussion and the belief about the Nephilim. So I said, yeah, I'll be there. I said, what time is the Sunday school start? He said, 10, 10. So my son came, got dressed. I said, we're going to Sunday school. He said, that's, that's cool, Dad. Let's go ahead and go. So he went there, man, and, and we enjoyed the, the lesson. There was feedback. Went to the sermon and uh, and listened to the sermons and introduced my son to my pastor. And my pastor was saying, yeah, you know, your dad's a good man and, and just the niceties and stuff. And, and going to church and coming back from church, my son was just picking my brain about the Bible and What's my opinion on this? What about this? What about this? What about this? And he's showing a real interest in it. And so to fast forward, he's like, uh, I said, well, you going to come back next week? He said, yes, sir. And he said, in fact, because if anyone that knows me, I like to wear, if I go to church, I mean, there's some people, they, they come as they are, and that's their prerogative. I'm not, not talking down on it, but when I go to church, I want to wear a suit, shirt, tie, coat, that kind of stuff. Uh, I try to look my best. And my son, I told him, I said, look, got to get your suit now. I said, <laughs> um, I'm not one of these individuals that go to church and sneakers and that kind of stuff. I'm not saying that's you, but I'm saying if you're asking me, I said, and he, he the last two times he came to church, he had on slacks, tie, shirt, no problem with that. I said, but you need to go ahead. I said, every man should have a good suit. I said, I said in fact, I said, every man should have several suits. I have several suits. I said, I'm going to take you shopping. He said, Dad, I, when I get off of work Friday, I'm going to come down. I'm going to have a set amount of money in my pocket, and I want you to go and help me get some suits and start my, my suit wardrobe. I'm like, Lord, thank you. And I say, I'll say this is that it's been my prayer for to get my family, my, my two daughters, my son, my wife, anybody in my family to, to see and develop a relationship and to, uh, to become closer with God. Um, there's some challenges in some parts of my family, but 
God can do anything. And when I try to pressure them or, or say things, that kind of stuff, maybe it can turn them off. But like I said, I pray, Lord, let me, let my children become close to have a relationship with you. And God has started off with one. He started off with my son. And my son is really seems to be eager about it. It really seems to be interested in it and, and, and really picking my brain for questions. So I'm going to try and nurture that and try to feed into his excitement. And hopefully um, it'll be infectious and, 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 and spread to the rest of my family, spread to my daughters. And that can only do um, what God allows me to do. But the things that I can't do, God can go further. When I tried it, things didn't work. Or when I try to present certain things, maybe didn't come across right. But when God does it, you sit back and you let him do it. Whatever you think may be impossible or seems most unlikely is going to happen, God can make it happen. God is still in the business of doing the impossible. He is still in the business of doing things that men think they can do. He can do it better. Don't even have to even sweat it. Snap of a finger is done. So that is what's going on in my life right now with my son. Like I said, it happened out of the blue. Wasn't expecting it, but that's the way God works. When you least expect something, that's when God blesses you. And God is blessing me, and I think he's blessing my son. And I hope that, and I'm praying to continue for God to give me knowledge, wisdom, and understanding so I can pass on to my son. <clears throat> and um, I'm just very happy about that. I'm very proud of my son. Um, he's a good, good man. Doesn't get into trouble. Um, does the best that he can. And now he wants to step into the spiritual <clears throat> aspect of his life. And I can't be more pleased and more happy. And that just goes to say that, again, I don't want to sound redundant, but when you think things are hardly are, are, are least likely to happen, that's when they happen. And like I said, God is definitely in the business of doing the impossible. So I have faith that he's going to do, he's going to work on the rest of my family as well through me or through whoever, whoever it does. I don't care who it comes to as long as they get um, that, that fire, that hunger and develop that relationship with God, I will be pleased and happy. So just my two cents on the impossible. God can definitely do the impossible. He can definitely do things that we think can never get done. God can do it. No ifs, ands, or buts. No sweat at all. Now, as always, your travels, you need some people that's going to question your Christianity, gonna question your faith in God and in the Bible. They're going to ask you questions like, why do you believe this? Or why do you believe that? Or why would God allow this? Or why would God allow that? As Christians, we have to be prepared. We have to be educated. We have to be informed to answer those questions because if not, the devil will try and use that individual to trip us up and to make us doubt things that we've already read in the Bible and we know to be true. Don't let that happen. It's your job. It's my job. It's our job to keep ourselves informed, to keep ourselves around like-minded like people. So we can feed off each other, learn from each other. When people like that try to challenge us and come into our life and, and, and say things that are crazy, we can tell them something along the lines of this. You say, hey, sir. Hey, madam. I choose to believe the Bible because it's a reliable collection of historical documents written down by eyewitnesses during the lifetime of other eyewitnesses. They report to us supernatural events that took place in fulfillment of specific prophecies, prophecies and claim that their writings are divine rather than human in origin. That comes from a pastor, Vody Bakum. He's an outstanding pastor. You can see him on YouTube. That's where I watch him at. And he's definitely informative and definitely teaches you about the Bible. So in closing, I'm just going to say, Y'all be safe out there in your travels. Keep God in your life, in every aspect of your life. And don't let the devil try and shake you. Until Wednesday, y'all have a fantastic day. I love you, and God bless you. Danny Graham, he speaks so clear. 
Love thy neighbor, hold them dear. Bible wisdom every day. God's on path, the only way. On the road to wisdom, right? Follow God through darkest nights. Bible's words are God in life. Marching forward with His might. Hear the stories from above. Jesus' power, pure as love. Trust in Him no matter fall. Grace is here for one and all. Follow God through darkest night. Bible's words are guiding light. Marching forward with His might.